Hello again. Today we have Converge Gundam Converge EX03. Uh, this is called the Deep Striker. But there's a bunch of other text. I think the chassis is MSA-0011 BST and Plan 303E. <clears throat> okay. It says 2014 there in the corner. Little jargon. Don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Okay. And then... Uh, not much text there. You can just have the robot itself. Okay, it seems like it was open before. There's a bunch of tape holding it together. Got a bit packed into this little box. Okay, instructions. So looking at fandom here, this was shown in a book, Gundam Sentinel or some sort of magazine. It's one configuration of the MSA-0011, which is some sort of robot, I assume. Pilot only, Gundarium, rocket thrusters. Technology and combat here. Let's focus on that. Idea, armaments, backlog. It's just a robot jammed into the other stuff, like a dendrobium. Twice the weight. Okay. Down here, though, it says it was never built. So I think it was like a concept within the Gundam universe, but it was never actually fulfilled. Eh, not sure. But at least on this page, I found this cool drawing. Uh, let's see if I can make it bigger. Oh, it doesn't really matter. The callouts are in Japanese. So <laughs> whoever drew it is great. Just uh, there's no Japanese, there's no English text on it. So. All right, let me, uh, oh my goodness, this is the, this is one of the worst gums I have. Let's see, this is the reigning champion. Uh, I should write when it was from, though. I don't know, it doesn't say. You'd think that food products would have a date on it. Granted, you're not going to eat this, but you will chew on it, right? Uh, I guess let's just keep both of them. Well, I think that looks the nastiest, but... like smoked plastic. Interesting. Uh, a lot of small parts in here keeping you know trying to not get scratched up by each other. Careful not to cut through the part. Bag, which I guess is the robot. All right. Let's see, just get parts out of the way, let's do the stand here. So this, the big vertical piece, and also this thing here. So these two attach, which is the front? This one, this looks like the back piece. All right, so there's a T. All right, so those two go, go together that way. This thing is facing that way. And then this thing goes here, or maybe it goes this way. And then this little thing here, there's a, wait a sec, there's a chamfer, not a chamfer, there's like a curved surface, and I guess it faces backwards. All right, that goes in there. Okay. So step one, we gotta start with 
you know, there's, there's part numbers, but how do you know what the part is? I don't think these things actually have part numbers molded in them. What looks like this? It looks like this. Alright, it looks like the base of a gun. And now we gotta put the barrel on. So this is rigid plastic. It's kind of sketchy. That could break for sure. And then, uh... No, I see. This goes in here. Alright, well, at least this rigid plastic is protected by this giant piece of plastic. This barrel actually has text molded in, which is kind of neat. Hold on. MSA-001, EFSF. Yeah, nice greebly details. There's a hose that will probably plug into something later. Uh, actuator, teeth. Yeah, this is kind of lame, though. I don't know what's going on here. It looks doesn't look right. Nice vent there. Yeah, nice details here. A little red there. Okay, there's that thing. Alright, so that goes on to this piece. And how do I hold this thing? Nope, I'm mistaken. It goes on to this piece. This is the head of the unit. That's the back of the head I'm looking at there. The instructions are really small. So before I do that, why don't you look at the this the head of this guy? Does it even come off? I think it does. I see like a a peg in there, but maybe it's the paint is stuck. The chin is really thin, so I'm really worried about it. There we go. Okay, so the head. We have nice translucent green eyes, and they're not very dark, so they look nice. There's a little metallic paint up in here. Some cannon details, vent details. Uh, I think the chin is a separate piece, but I'm not going to take it out. A lot of vents back here. Okay. You can see all that. Whoop. You can see all the silver paint that, it, that came off the other side. Okay, so underneath that head would be this. The neck is like a gunmetal, and there's some, I don't know, ribs next to it. Decent enough details there. Yeah, you're going to get off. Not too much rotation because it's colliding with these black jet packs. So it kind of wants to just stay, sit forward, but that much articulation, it's not much. All right, so the shoulders, do these rotate, I wonder? I would assume so. Again, stuck paint, but at least got it has a big peg and hole, so that's pretty durable. This forearm here, I don't know if that comes off, but the hand, again, is probably a separate piece. This gunmetal has got a hole for a weapon. I don't know. Well, anyways, the shoulder has got nice printing on it. That thing that was on the box, I don't know what that. It looks like a. VMS, AMS or something. This side here, let's break that shoulder loose. It's got a round Gundam something. That text is so small I can't make it out. What else? So yeah, the boosters are a nice matte black. Actually all this is pretty much matte. Except for, no, the thrusters are gunmetal, shiny, so that's cool. There's some sort of central shaft here, and it's going to take some piece into it. Underneath, yeah, okay. There's some gunmetal up front here. Little details on the side. Alright, now, let's put this on somewhere. Where? Oh, I see. So these two pegs are going into the hoop, two pegs of the jet pack. I gotta make sure this hose is out of the way. Okay, so that's what's going on with that. Now there's a whole mess load of stuff going on now. Oh, the head needs the antennae. So the antennae also has like a little metallic green in there and yeah yellow and red that pops on the head like here uh, 
yeah. Alright, good good friction fit on that one. I don't think that's gonna fall off too easily. Uh, what is next? We got this ray dome thing. Ray dome looks pretty cool. There's some blue out of all the gray and white and red. Yeah, on the back side, minor groove details. This has a lot of detail molded in though. So same two pegs are yeah, going to go into these two holes. Now you'll see there's a crossbar going into the other side. So it's going to go into the thruster and the, the gun we put on beforehand. Hmm, something is nuts. It's not going into the, the jet pack. Pretty hard to get your fingers in that little area. Hmm, I guess that's right. Now, like here, I feel like I gotta wiggle this thing in place. All right, I think that's tight enough. I don't know where this goes still. It's just floating. Unless well, it's supposed to hide underneath. Oh, maybe that goes down here. That that thing. I don't know how it's going to reach it though, it's too... F oh, I feel like it's just a little bit too short. But with suspicion, yeah, according to the instructions, that's, this pipe is supposed to go in there. But me, I don't, I don't really see it happening. It's just too short. It needs to be longer. You'd have to glue that in place if you want it to stay there. I don't care, I'm not going to bother. Alright, uh, what else? We have this radio looking thing with three spikes but the spikes are not really equally distant and now I think is this one is messed up it's also rigid plastic so I don't want to bend it too much it's gonna break forever okay well um, all the details I guess not so bad uh, that's really too bad hold on will this come out no it will not yeah it's just not true I feel it's supposed to be like that oh well ah uh, where does this go hmm I think it's just supposed to go into the bottom of the arm yeah like this or bottom of the shoulder it becomes the arm so yeah he's got an arm radome spike thing okay now the bottom of the thing comes together and which way if I hold this this way uh, it goes like this okay so we have that slot that slot and this tooth and that slot or whatever yeah, whatever the you want to call these shapes slots teeth pegs coming together still over here. it's like a big jumble of random stuff so now we have big booster tanks you know for fuel decent enough details on them nice grooves and stuff like that we have more of the matte black now with more thrusters six more thrusters and vectoring veins some ribbing in there this is like crooked I want to put that hot water bend it straight but I'm not gonna bother Okay, yeah, this is kind of weird. I don't know why that's all open. And then it's got like wings on this side, but not the other side. Or maybe they're, these are antennae. It's like little thrusters or something. Alright, well, anyways, what's next? We have to put this thing. What the heck is that thing? And how is this situated? It's like this. I think it's this piece. I had to guess, yeah, there's an L shape and this has an L shape on it, so I'm going to pop that up in there. I feel like that might want to be glued. Well, it's not moving. Oh, I think it's a landing gear. Alright. So, three and four. I see. I guess you can display it as is right now. So let's try it. Alright. 
So it's like the top half of a Gundam robot, and then the bottom half is just a bunch of thrusters, and there's just a bunch of weird stuff going on. I'm not sure if I like this look. I'm not really a fan of that so far. It's also very back heavy. But I think we're going to move on to the next stage. Oh, this is the mobile suit stage. Are you kidding me? That's, that is the whole thing, huh? I just feel like I should have more. Alright, well, let's, let's just change it into a mobile suit. So we got to take off basically the whole top part. Right, so this, we have to take these things off, the big cannon, and this radome thing. Uh, we gotta take this thing off for sure, because we're gonna have to replace it with an arm. And also, Oh, this comes off. Huh. Alright, didn't realize that. So now, those little bits here, we have an arm. Let's pop that in. And that arm has the hand already molded in. What is this? This probably goes here. Oh, but you got to take the head off. Head off to get this in. back on. I feel that's crooked also. There's a lot of crookedness in this, this setup here. Lower torso. Yeah, that's going to go up in here. And then this lower part pegs that. So this thing kind of tie, helps tie the two top and bottom together. This robot's got some funky kneecaps. Oh, so I'm going to have to glue that in place later. I barely touched that and it fell off. Alright, so it's got... I wonder if this whole backpack comes off. Uh, I don't think so. Well, the image is not saying so. So now we have these things. And this one can go here. The other side is a mirror image. And it's actually a different shape. This one has a D-shaped hole. The other side just had two rounds. So there's a left and right, and it's idiot-proof. What are these little things? Uh, they go on the top of the shoulders. They're like little wings on the top of the shoulders, but... Uh, the way it is, you'd be better off just taking the shoulder off. Hold on. I'm gonna twist while I push that down. Okay, so that goes in there. Get the other wing thing. Hmm. Get the orientation down. Alright. So you can move this a little bit left and right. It won't clear this white piece here though. You can't bring it forward. I guess that's it. Well, it does have a beam weapon. Uh, this is a cool rifle, actually. Look at all the groove details. These little hole recesses here. It looks like a generator or something. Uh, a bipod. Uh, the barrel is a tiny recess. Hmm. All right. So then this hand must rotate. I gotta break the paint loose. There we go this in. So it doesn't have a stand for the figure mode. Let's see if it'll stand on its own. Well, what do you know? The, I think the gun balances out the, the thruster pack, so it will stand. Alright, here's a closer look though. It's a cool looking robot actually. Uh, I do like the look of this thing. Hmm, I think there's a blue version of this robot that doesn't have all this extra gear. I might actually get that because I like the look of this robot a lot. Okay, now I guess there's a storage mode. That's what this last thing is. Uh, 
I see. Move this out first. I don't know if that's I don't think this is supposed to stay here. But you see this? These this is the like old style foot stand for the robot. You see? It kinda the robot's legs kind of mate with that. It's not really a, it's not really a friction fit. It's just kind of an alignment tool. And now you see the the chest plate fell off. Yeah. So that that's kind of interesting. It just keeps it in in location. Alright, so now this thing, let's see, storage wise, we kind of put this trilobe thing over here. I see nowhere for it to peg in. That's, that's odd, right? Uh, it says it's supposed to rest here. But how? I think it's literally just supposed to rest on it. Yeah, because there's like a little. Sorry, this is. There's a little round recess, and so I think it literally just sits like that. It's kind of lame. I mean, if the thing has a peg, why wouldn't they just have a peg hole and you peg it into the peg hole? But no. Something about the molding process, they just wanted to do that. So it does rest, but. You can't pick it up and expect it to be there. Alright. So I guess I'm not going to remove this from the table. i got to change the camera angle then. Alright, what else is there going on? See, this thing just wobbles off. Uh, saying the cannon gets stored somewhere back here. How? to say right. oh I see you got to put these two back together so this thing and this thing meet with that cross member and then that sits in this groove so the hose just kind of dangles but uh, there you go that sits in the groove I guess this thing is supposed to just rest vertically in here so that's why there's a rounded rounded thing here is for this tank to rest on it. Oh I see and also there's rounded things here for the side tanks you know to rest. So it's three points of contact. So that's that's actually not so bad. Although it's not it's not a tight fit or anything like that. Uh but where does this rest? got that peg. There's only one peg so I don't know if there's like something sticking out here or maybe it just rests here. Uh, according to the instructions there's nowhere for, to, for this to chill out. <laughs> I'm just going to chuck it back there. It's a half assed stand so I'm going to do this half assed. So that's one way you can display it. Uh, just the robot itself with all the gear behind it but you know, that seems weird to me. Uh, it is a cool robot, I'll give him that. But I didn't buy all this just to have it sitting on a stand. So I'm going to put it back into the flight mode. So here it is, just keeping that arm on the other side and it's holding the weapon. So basically it, it is like a top half of a Gundam with the bottom half of a bunch of boosters. So I think that looks alright. You could also not put these two on and leave those two little white things on. That would be another look. But anyways, I, I think I'm gonna... Since it's really not a Gundam, it's more like a... Weird... Assault... Platform of some sort. I guess I do like this more. So, as the original instructions had it. So this kind of reminds me of two other uh, large flying platforms. This is EX-28, the Narrative Apex. And so the Narrative Apex is much larger, it's a bit larger. 
It can be even larger than that if the claws were forward. And then EX07 is the dendrobium. Look how small the stand is on this one. It's quite interesting. I did have these add these wires to have the thing shooting out. So, yeah, okay. This is the smallest of the bunch, but it's still a sizable converge figure. You know, so I guess I can understand why it's called an EX. Let's get these guys out of here. I have videos on all these other ones, of course, if you want to look up the, the channel. Let's get this drawing out of the way. Just get a black background, come in a little closer. So this is it's cool. Uh, I like it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, one issue I found design engineering wise is right here. This this spacer is too wide. I can actually see the pegs on this side. When I put I decided to push this side in first. So this is sitting flush against the black booster. But you'll see as it comes around, this one is not sitting flush against the booster because of that top spacer. It's just too wide. It seems odd. See right there, you can see that that peg. Well, anyways, other than that, everything seems to be fine. I also did flip the uh, stand, so it's without the back piece, this thing will fall backwards. Uh, the black stand back piece, that is, that belongs over here. But if you just flip this piece around, you, you don't need to take up as much floor space. Okay, well, thanks for watching today. I'll see you in the next converge video. Bye now.